The movie starts with four teenage boys, Caleb Danvers, Pog Perry, Reed Garwin, and Tyler Sims standing at the edge of a cliff. They talk about a party that is happening at the bottom as they are looking down from a cliff. The blonde Reed says it's time to join the party and his eyes swirl yellow, then turn black as he jumps off the cliff. The rest of the teenagers jump off the cliff as well. Who are these young men with such magic powers? This is Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2006 American supernatural horror film called The Covenant. Be aware, there are spoilers. Surrounding the bonfire, two friends, Kate and Sarah, start talking about the people there at the party. As the four schoolboys approach, Kate describes them to Sarah as the sons of Ipswich. Kate introduces Sarah as her new roommate to the four teenagers. Moments later, someone says over a loudspeaker that cops are on their way. Everyone scrambles and starts running away from the party. The group of students head into the woods. The four teenagers get into the car while the other two girls get in Sarah's car along with Chase, a new student. Sarah's car won't start, so Reed offers to fix it. His eyes again turn yellow for an instant and he uses his powers to fix Sarah's car, which she then immediately starts. Sarah drives off with Kate and Chase. A police car starts pursuing the four teenagers inside a Hummer. The police are chasing them at high speed and they make it out of the woods. Now they are driving very fast in an open field that is quite foggy and gloomy. Reed asks everyone in the car if they're ready to do it. The cops are scared because they think the boys don't know something. All four boys' eyes turn black. There's a big chasm up ahead of them. Reed accelerates and the car flies across the chasm and the car vanishes in the fog. All of a sudden, the Hummer falls from the sky right behind the police car. The cops are dumbfounded and confused trying to figure out what just happened as the boys get away. That night, as Caleb walks into his house, he hears his mother calling him. She starts talking about Caleb's father and says that she doesn't want to lose Caleb like she lost his father. Caleb's mother warns him that the powers he got when he was 13 will be a thousand times stronger after his 18th birthday. She mentions the powers are too seductive and once he starts using them, he won't be able to stop. He will age faster, taking bits of his life every time he uses his power until there's nothing left. She doesn't want what happened to his father to happen to him. Back at the dorm, Sarah asks why Kate called the boys the sons of Ipswich. Kate explains that they're descendants from the five families who settled the Ipswich colony in the 1600s. Sarah asks about the fifth Ipswich family, and Kate says that during the witch hunts, that family was killed. The following day, Caleb is driving and talking on the phone with Pogue. Caleb glances at the passenger seat and gets frightened by the ghost of a dead student. In a split second, Caleb looks back to the road. The truck crashes head-on with Caleb's Mustang which explodes into hundreds of car parts flying around and comes back together. Caleb picks up the phone to tell Pogue that he just saw a darkling in the form of the dead student. Later that day, Caleb stops by the pharmacy to pick up some medication. Caleb runs into Kate, Sarah, and Chase. Caleb says he has to run errands for his mother and invites Sarah to go with him, and she accepts with a smile on her face. They drive by Putnam's barn, and Caleb says that the area was where the original Ipswich colony was established. Eventually, they pull up in front of a huge old house that Caleb says was their family's first colony house. Caleb leaves Sarah in the car while he goes into the house. Once inside the house, Caleb drops off the medication on the table and asks if he, not Gorman, needs anything else, and Gorman says no. There is someone sitting on the armchair, and then the camera focuses on the hands of what seems to be a person. However, the fingers look extremely old, wrinkly, and damaged. That evening, everyone goes to a bar. Sarah asks Kate to give her a quarter and she goes to the jukebox to play Joan Jett's I Love Rock and Roll. Everyone starts dancing and singing. Sarah grabs Caleb by the arm and starts dancing very seductively and close to each other. Meanwhile, Aaron, a pompous student, starts a fight with Reed and Tyler on the other side of the bar. They walk out of the bar to fight. Reed and Aaron are fighting over a bet they made. The bar manager opens the back door holding a bat in his hand and tells them to break it off and prevent a fight. Aaron and his friend leave. Caleb confronts Reed about using his powers in front of people and they have an argument that turns into a fight. They start attacking each other using their superpowers. Caleb is noticeably a lot stronger than Reed and wins the fight. Pogue has to intervene to hold Caleb back from hurting Reed even more. After they leave the bar, Caleb gives Sarah a ride back to the dorms and before she steps out of his car, she kisses Caleb. During her sleep, Sarah has a terrifying nightmare where her room is full of spiders.
The following day, Sarah is at the library reading some books about paganism and witches. Kate disrupts Sarah, who states she's reading about Caleb's family history, and asks Kate if she knew that the witch hunting started in Ipswich. But Kate doesn't know much about it. It is a rainy night and Caleb and Sarah are in Caleb's car. Caleb asks Sarah to go with them to the Fall Fest that Saturday, which also happens to be his birthday. They start having fun, passionately. The next morning during swimming practice, Caleb and Chase have a swimming race. At the end of the race, Chase's eyes turn yellow, then black, showing he also has powers, and he uses his powers to make Caleb crash his head onto the wall. Caleb loses consciousness and opens his eyes to see his friends staring down on him, telling him that Chase saved him from drowning after he hit his head. After the pool incident, Caleb starts suspecting Chase. Caleb and Pogue break into the admissions office and are investigating Chase's profile. Caleb found out Chase's parents died on his 18th birthday. Sarah goes to visit Kate, who is in the hospital. The doctor tells Sarah he believes Kate was bitten by hundreds of spiders. After leaving the admissions office, Caleb, Pogue, Tyler, and Reed meet in an underground chamber. Caleb uses his powers to take the Book of Damnation from a shelf. The book contains the names of all the people who brought witch charges against John Putman. Caleb tells the others that Goody Pope was one of Putnam's accusers and that Putnam came to her in her dreams as an incubus after her husband died. As a result of this dream, she had a child and they realized that Putnam's family line didn't die with him and that Chase is his son. He is the fifth son of Ipswich. Sarah calls Caleb and tells him that Kate is in the hospital and she was bitten by hundreds of spiders. Then, Caleb tells the group that Chase put a spell of creation on Kate. Pogue storms out of the room furious and in pursuit of Chase. Pogue is riding his motorbike very fast when he sees Chase in the middle of the road. He accelerates his bike to try to run him over, but Chase uses his power to bring Pogue down. They have a discussion and then Chase beats Pogue down. That evening, Chase goes to Sarah's dorm. Caleb arrives there later and notices Chase has put a spell on Sarah, who is unconscious on her bed. Chase wants Caleb's soon-to-be powers after he ascends on his 18th birthday. Chase says if Caleb gives him his power, he won't kill Sarah, his mother, and his friend Pogue, Reed, and Tyler. Chase orders Caleb to meet him at Putnam's barn the following night, at the moment when Caleb will ascend and to give Chase his power. Shortly after, they start fighting using their powers, but Chase is too powerful. Chase thinks that adding Caleb's power to his own will fix the aging problem. But Caleb tells him it doesn't work like that. It's the body that wears down, not the power. Caleb loses the fight but asks Chase to leave Sarah alone and to stop the spell. And Caleb removes the spell from Sarah. Caleb then takes Sarah to meet his father, William Danvers III. He's only 44 years old but he looks extremely old because he used too much power and it consumed his body. Caleb tells Sarah everything about the power and the covenant. Caleb tells Reed and Tyler to take Sarah to the dance and keep an eye on her. Chase is observing them from the top of a building when he spots Sarah walking across the lawn. Chase drops down from the top of a building and snatches her. Caleb is driving to the barn and calls Reed who tells him that Sarah is gone. Out of nowhere, Chase jumps onto the hood of Caleb's car and attacks him. Caleb gets out of the car and runs through the rain to the old Putnam barn, which is full of rusty hanging farm equipment. Chase says he doesn't think Caleb is going to hold up his end of the bargain, so he took out an insurance policy. Sarah, who is floating unconscious at the far end of the barn. Both start fighting in the barn by using their powers to throw stuff at each other. Caleb starts his ascension and his body starts glowing as he receives the power. Chase has the upper hand in the fight because he is stronger. At the barn, Chase tells Caleb to just say the words, I will you my power. But Caleb disagrees with him and they continue fighting. Caleb's mom arrives at the old colony house to talk Caleb's dad into willing Caleb his power. Caleb's dad says the words, I will you, my power, and back at the barn, lightning flashes, and Caleb receives his dad's power, making him stronger. Chase throws an energy ball at Caleb, but he is stronger now. He catches the energy ball and then throws it back at Chase. The power hits Chase and passes through his body. Chase flies backwards following the fiery energy ball, which explodes against the barn, and Chase's body disappears. Caleb goes back into the burning barn to save Sarah, who is unconscious. Caleb takes Sarah out of the burning barn. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Kate and Pogue both regain consciousness. Next morning, Caleb and Sarah are still at the barn, along with the firefighters and their fire trucks. One of the firefighters comes up to tell them that they searched the area and didn't find anybody else. Sarah wonders how that can be. 
Caleb says he doesn't know. Caleb waits for the firefighters to pass by, then uses his power to fix the windshield of his car, and then he and Sarah drive off into the sunrise. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.